Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome to iCollect. In today's episode, instead of meeting a collector of collectibles, I'm meeting a creator of collectibles and what he creates is a form of art that has become increasingly popular in recent years. I'm talking about the craft of aquascaping, or you can call it underwater gardening. So let's go and meet the creator of aquascaping. I'm Little Ong and I create aquascapes. Hi Little. Hello. Looking at your work of art, uh, I'm so amazed by it because they look so visually captivating. Mm. Could you just tell us, you know, what is aquascaping? Well, aquascaping is basically uh -huh. underwater gardening. Mm. It's a bit of design, it's a bit of craft, it's understanding of nature mm -hmm. and putting all that together to craft an underwater landscape. And uh, when did you get started doing this? Well, about eight years ago, I wanted to introduce my son to Longkang fishing. Because that's what we grew up <laughs> yeah, with, right? Yeah, that's correct, that's correct. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. so brought him to a, a, a farm, mm -hmm. paid $15 for a bucket and a, and a net and an hour to catch whatever fish. Mm -hmm. That led to a small aquarium in a jar, mm -hmm. and then a small tank, okay. and then eventually a $20 tank okay. of carousel. Okay, it gets uh, bigger and bigger. Yes. Yeah, it got bigger and bigger, and then one tank led to three tanks, and then okay. I ran out of space and I started figuring out how to create aqua jars, which are ah. unfiltered aquariums. Okay, which is like something like this. Something like this, okay. yeah. They, they, they have no filters, okay. no mm -hmm. air bubbler. Mm -hmm. They just uh, exist purely on the understanding of science and well, yes. specifically photosynthesis. That led to today where I'm running workshops to teach people how to do this. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. And uh, how many do you have or how many you have created so far? Over the last eight years, I've lost count. <laughs> but my collection today yes. is uh -huh. about mid 20s like 20 over okay yeah. so you you do create them and then uh you keep some of them and then some of them it's for sale actually yeah so uh i i make mainly for myself for mm -hmm. my own enjoyment a lot of them are also experimentation to see mm -hmm. what works what doesn't work uh, mm -hmm. what kind of uh, different formats like sometimes i i, I find this vast right and mm -hmm. I think, okay maybe i could put a bonsai there maybe yeah, i make it's a beautiful cliff. this one yes uh, i get commissions like mm -hmm. people write to me and uh, call me and tell me hey, you know, i need a certain feng shui tank Ah, with water feature okay, and then okay. I could do something like that or I could you know, have something to put at my TV console so I could mm. commissions to do this. Mm. Then others, I, I create at prototypes uh, for new workshops that I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this is a prototype for a, a workshop that is yet to be launched. Hi Little, you know when I uh, went to check out your Instagram account on aquascaping mm. and I saw your Instagram account and it's it's called Ikan Billy. I thought that was really cute and interesting. Is there a story behind it? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, it took about a year before mm. I was confident enough to put mm. pictures of my aquascapes on mm. Instagram. Mm. I needed a handle. Mm. So I, re I recall my wife used to mistakenly order Nasi Lemak Ikan Billy. But oh, it's supposed okay. to be ikan, ikan bilis. bilis. Correct. So ikan bilis is Malay for anchovies, right? Correct, yes. Uh, I thought it's okay, it's, it's quite funny because my name is Little Ong, mm -hmm. right? Uh, little is, is small. So I'm, I'm pretty much the small fish in, in the aquascaping world. <laughs> uh. So, and then, yeah, that's how, that's how ikan yeah, bilis starts. actually. Little, I'm looking at these uh, very different types of aquascape. You know, could you just tell us the difference between all these different types? Most of these are actually fresh water. Mm -hmm. But what you actually don't realize is that there, mm -hmm. there are also saltwater tanks here. Oh, really? Yeah, so like wow. this, this is a saltwater jar mm. with seaweed growing inside. Yeah. And this one here is, okay. is all seaweed. Ah, which we call okay. macroalgae. They are actually right. larger form of, all forms of algae. But Is this something very new? Because I've never heard of this before. It's more visible in the past maybe a few years only. Mm -hmm. uh, not many people are uh, into it be just because it's more difficult to, to mm. collect I would, I would uh, so, yes. macroalgae mm -hmm. than because the shops hardly sell them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea of using macroalgae in an in a aquarium as a marine planted tank, mm. it's very new. That makes it really, really interesting for me because mm. it's a new area to explore. Mm -hmm. And because we're in the tropics, mm -hmm. so we are surrounded by beaches. Yes, correct. So actually, it's, it's very interesting for me to find out where the, when the low tides are and then ah. head out there with a few friends of my family and then we go search around for interesting ah, okay. seaweed to collect from mm -hmm. our beaches. And, okay. and it's something that is uh, sustainable all the time that we're out there collecting this. <laughs> coming back to make something beautiful and yes. understand them mm -hmm. and to grow them further, mm -hmm. I think that makes the hobby you know, a, a bit more interesting. Yes, right? yes indeed. Yeah. 
Could you just tell us that it, how do you actually put them together? Is it difficult? The same thought process mm -hmm. about how to craft it, how to design it, mm -hmm. is pretty much the same. When I approach a, a salt water tank and yes, I approach a fresh water tank, okay. yeah, I could show you. Oh, great. Yeah. Let's From maybe a, a freshwater uh, uh, jar kind okay. of perspective. All right, great. Yeah. Okay, Veto, I'll let you take it away to show us how you do it. Sure. I've already selected this rock because mm, I think okay. it looks quite nice. All right. How did you get the rock from? Well, you can get rocks like this from mm -hmm. aquarium shops, okay. those that specialize in uh, planted aquariums. Okay. So you can buy like things like driftwood, mm. rocks, mm -hmm. uh, okay. aquatic plants, in sand, aquatic soil. Uh, mm. You can also find rocks from landscaping shops or nurseries. Okay. I want to create something that uh, has a piece of wood protruding out, like a barren uh, tree. Let me glue this now. So my hardscape design is complete. Flanking it mm. to the left, to the right side here might be quite interesting with the wood coming up. So with this, then I will look for other rocks that I can place at the bottom. So I'm placing rocks here to create a barrier so mm -hmm. that I can raise the substrate just slightly higher behind mm -hmm. for the taller plants. Since I have this grey rocks, mm -hmm. uh, I'll put a grey sand to make it look more natural. So the next step I'm, I'm going to do is to mm -hmm. fill water. Okay. Yeah, so I don't want any splashing, so I use something to break the fall of the water. Ah, all right. Yeah. So how long does it take for you to complete this whole thing? Well, I, I, I can do this in about an hour okay. um, because I've done so many. But I would say don't rush it because mm. it's, the, the process is uh, should be fun. Okay, I'm going to start planting. Sometimes some plants are planted for the future because eventually they'll grow up and mm. I expect these plants to kind of grow out of the water as well. Okay, so now I am adding foreground plants. Mm -hmm. uh, this helps to accent the, the sand mm. in the foreground. Okay, so I've, I found a small selection of rocks that I'm going to use the accent, the front. Mm -hmm. uh, this makes the foreground a bit more interesting and natural looking. Okay, so this is the completed scape. Beautiful, yes. Thank you. Alright, so the one you just uh, completed is right here. Beautiful with the light on. So, Little, I understand that you also conduct a workshop for right. uh, those people who are interested in aquascaping. Mm. So, how often do you do that? Well, uh, once or twice a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I conduct different workshops as mm -hmm. well. Uh, so, I have uh, crab attacks like this. Okay. To keep uh, vampire crabs, shrimp jars, mm. right? Keep shrimps. I have this uh, aqua jar here. Mm. So, what do they like most when the students come here to, to take your class? It's quite multifaceted yeah. in a sense. I teach them about the science of it, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the crafting of it. Mm -hmm. So, there's the design aspect. There's a lot that they take away from it. So, I think, I would like to think they enjoy mm -hmm. the entire process. Okay, I'm sure they do. <laughs> and uh, of course, I think the, the pleasure is seeing, seeing their completed piece, right? Yes. After just a few hours mm -hmm. and being able to take that home. Alright, that's great. Now we're at Little's home to find out what he has created for himself. Let's go and find out. So this is my community tank. I have it for about eight years now. It's gone through a lot of evolution uh, as I learn in the craft itself. So from improving uh, the lighting to the kind of plants I have to topping up substrate and the kind of fish I have over the years. This tank has different schools of fish. The blue and the red ones, those are cardinal tetras. They always swim as a school. Um, I have a smaller group of snakeskin bubs, those fish with uh, orange and what looks like snakeskin patterns, black patterns on them. Um, then there are some fish that are always hidden until feeding time. Uh, there's a group of empire gudgeons. I think there are five of them at this point. Um, there's also very small corridora fish. There are small armored catfish that swim at the bottom. Uh, they, are, they are one of the cleanup crews I have inside here uh, to take all the food that drops to the bottom. There's also the auto sinkers. They clean the glass. And there's the whiptail catfish which goes around nibbling the very old algae in this very old tank. A lot of people tend to uh, minimize algae in their tank, which I try to do so. But some algae is quite nice, like the kind that plaits the wood and the rocks. Uh, they form very fluffy kind of velvet coverings on them, which are 
quite pretty to look at uh, as long as they don't overwhelm the plants, uh, which I'm fine with. So sometimes aquascapes uh, don't have to be uh, pristine in the sense that uh, there's zero algae um, because they can be aesthetically pleasing as well. Um, after all, your aquascape is really a, a, a piece of art that you yourself enjoy. So different takes for different folks, I guess. This is my smallest tank at the moment. It is a macroalgae tank in salt water. It contains seaweed that I have collected around Singapore beaches during low tides. So this aquarium, it is salt water of course. Uh, it has a group of five sexy shrimps. They're called sexy shrimps because I think because they like to wiggle their butts all the time. There's also a pom-pom crab. This crab has two anemones on its claws. So it looks like it's always you know, shaking the pom-poms all the time. Um, so I'm going to show you how I maintain this tank. So usually I start with cleaning the condensation of the cover, clean off the detritus and some microalgae that's growing on the acrylic. This is acrylic, not glass. I use a tiny brush to get into small spaces here. Take out some of these alva. And then the next thing I do is to vacuum the sand using this turkey baster, a hand siphon. So what I do is get some of the sand out. So the detritus will get vacuumed inside here. I release the sand back. So as I'm doing this, I'm also shaping up the, the substrate. Le pushing the sand back to places where I, I want them to be a bit higher. Now that all the vacuuming is done, I'm going to fill back water. So this is a really pre-mixed salt water. So once that's done, then I look into tidying up the scape. Okay, so I am done with my arrangements. It's all clean and looking nice and tidy again. And now we're going to find out what Little has created for his most precious client. So Luca, tell me what you like the most. I like my puffer fish the most. Oh really? Yeah. Tell me where, which one? This one? This one. It's okay. this one over there. What else do you like? I like the anemones. They're very cool. Hmm. Nice. It's a giant bubble tip anemone over here. Okay. You look at it every day because it's in your study room. So you look at it every day. Uh, yeah. What else do you enjoy the most? Do you follow your daddy to go and collect all these microalgae, the yes. fish, and the shell? Yeah, I see a lot of things there. Oh, okay. What else do you collect from there? I collect some hermit crabs. Mm -hmm. Some crabs. Mm -hmm. Crabs and crabs. More crabs. If there's very small anemones you collect. Okay. Are they here? Some of them are here, right? Yeah. Okay. What else do you collect? Uh, Can you recall? Maybe some shells. Mm -hmm. Some shells. That's about it. Okay. So do you do you take care of it? Yeah, I take care of it. Oh, you are the one who take care of it or your daddy is, take, is the one taking care I of take it? Take care of it. You do take care of it? Yeah, my dad only helps a little in water change. Only a little bit? Yeah. High five. <laughs> okay, this is my pond in my balcony. It's as old as my community tank. Uh, took me about four months to figure out how to get everything done. Uh, the size is custom made. Uh, what's cool about this tank is that uh, the green wall here is watered by the aquarium water. So twice a day, water gets pumps up. Uh, it filters through the um, pots here and filters back into the tank. So this is uh, great in two ways. One, my plants on the wall get uh, the water it needs and also the nutrition it needs from all the fish poo and uh, uh, nitrates that are created by the aquarium underneath. So it's a natural filtration, uh, natural fertilization here. Uh, yes, the aquarium itself it gets uh, naturally filtered because the excess nitrates are then taken up not only by the aquarium plants but also by the green wall here. What I just need to do every two days is to top up water here. And it's gotten so old that it's uh, so balanced that I don't even have to do my weekly water changes on this. I just need to do maybe a water change every month or maybe every two months when I get a bit lazy. Uh, and the rest is really just the regular maintenance of 
trimming and planting and keeping my, my garden really tidy. And of course, the thing that I enjoy most is the daily feeding of my fishes. So they know I'm near, I'm near and they will all come to the front like what they're doing now. Now that we know more about aquascaping, we certainly know that it is not difficult to get into it and it's certainly very fun and rewarding to do. Now thanks to Little, we learned so much about aquascaping. If you liked today's episode, please give us a like and share our content. Subscribe to iCollect and if you are a creator or a collector yourself and you want to share your passion, please get in touch with us via this email address. So to the next episode, this is Thomas saying bye bye for now. Under the sea, under the sea, darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me.